sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. He came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Now, mighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, Graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed all around him, he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called straight, and ask the house, ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias 
come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings and children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house, laying his hands on him. He said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father. So also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate it and still die, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as I said, it's a great joy uh, to be gathered together with you all for Mass uh, to our uh, pre-Catholic school children. Uh, Welcome to St. Louis Parish. It's a great joy to welcome you here. So Sarah, Emmy, Gabby, Gretchen, and Addie, this is your chance uh, to sort of, in a sense, show your parish church to your friends. Uh, So for you, uh, for you kids from the school, those of you especially who are not our parishioners, uh, this is a kind of virtual field trip for you. And so I thought uh, that I would use the homily as a way of making it uh, a little bit of a virtual field trip for you because, and the reason why, here's the reason why, is because everything in this church, just like just about every Catholic church, right, all of the images, all of the windows, all of the statues, any of the paintings, they are all meant to teach us about our faith and to help us to pray, to help us to enter into that. So I want to show you just a few things here in this church that can help us enter into this weekend's homily, this today's homily, right? Because, uh, so here we are in the church, 
Uh, we're now out in the church, part of the church called the Nave. See, there's our Blessed Virgin Mary, right? That's Our Lady of Guadalupe, right? She is uh, um, she is a special part of, of our Mass today, too, not only because she is a spouse of Joseph, but also because today we begin the month of Mary, right? But today, here we see Joseph, right? It's his feast day. I'm going to come back to him. We're going to sort of end talking about Joseph a little bit, but to help us get in the mood and remember what we're doing. Ooh, it's bright out. So it might even be hard for you to see that, right? But here we have the resurrection window and you see in the middle, this is the way our parish windows are designed that along the nave uh, on either side, there's four sets of three windows, right? And in those three windows, the middle one is a gospel story. And on the outside, there are symbols that help us uh, to understand part of the story of salvation history, to understand part of how God works. I'm trying to hold the camera a little bit straight for you. But here we see the risen Jesus, right? And I know it's bright, so it's hard to see. And on either sides of the risen Jesus, let's see if turning will, uh, getting a better angle will help the light. On either sides of the risen Jesus, you see images of the fact that he is a king. You see a crown, right? No longer is he crowned with thorns as in his passion, but now he's crowned in glory by his resurrection. You see the image of the throne reminding us that he is seated at the father's right hand. But the thing about the resurrection kids is that it's not just a story that we remember that happened 2000 years ago. The risen Jesus is alive in the church today. Have you ever noticed that we don't usually say Jesus has risen or Jesus once rose? We, we love to say in the Easter season, Jesus is risen, right? It's something that's true now today right because he's alive in heaven today but also because he's alive in the church and all week in our gospel readings at mass we've been learning about one of the most important ways that that is true that jesus planned that people of every age and every generation would get to know the risen jesus that is through the eucharist okay and this set of three windows teaches us about the Eucharist. It really might be hard to see with the light, but this tells us how the story started. And we started reading this story uh, at, the, at the end of last week, the so last week's school mass, we would have started reading the story. Although I think you might've used the same reading last week, right? But last week we started reading the story and what it shows us is the loaves and the fish, right? When people had gathered to hear Jesus teach, Right. And they were they had been sitting and listening to him teach and they were amazed and hanging on his every word. So they didn't want to leave. They didn't want to go anywhere, but they'd been there all day. And so they were starting to get hungry. And the apostles were wondering, how will we ever feed all these people? And Jesus made a miracle happen that day that he multiplied the loaves and the fish. Right. But then the next day he used that as a way of. Uh, starting to teach them about how he was going to feed us with the bread of life. And that's what we've been reading this week is that that long teaching called the bread of life discourse in which he's teaching them about the Eucharist, that he is going to give us his very flesh to eat. We heard that in today's gospel, the part that we just heard, right? He said, my flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. And the language is really startling. People hear that my flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. What does that mean? How can this man give us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink, right? And so in the midst of that, they're all confused, right? They don't understand the gift of the Eucharist yet, the gift of the of Holy Communion, of the Mass, right? And we see that as he's teaching them that it is telling us about Holy Communion because he's holding a host and a chalice, but also behind him, you see a kind of silhouette of the story of the Last Supper. But here in the front, what do you see? You see Jesus standing there presenting the Eucharist, showing us the Eucharist as if he's teaching us about it. And who's on either sides of him? Who is that? We have St. Peter and St. John. Now, St. John is the one who is telling us this story. St. John was watching it happen. He was there for it, like St. Peter, but he's the one who in his gospel, he's going to tell us the story. So he is the witness to what's happening, right? And what happened is, and this would actually be the next part of the story after the chunk that we read in today's gospel. 
right? Is people are starting to be amazed and yes, very, very confused. They're, they're in wonder, they're just, what is going on? This man is gonna give us his flesh to eat. And they're so confused and so astounded that the, the whole crowds of people that had gathered and were following him, they all left. Everyone left except the 12. Jesus' 12 apostles, his 12 closest friends. And Jesus is going to look at them. And he's not going to he's not going to pretend that he was just kidding or that what he was talking about is a symbol like, gee, why did they go away? Don't they know that I just mean like think of my flesh and blood? No, he didn't say that. He said he was very serious. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Right. That's how awesome the gift of the Eucharist that he gives us is. And he just looks at them. Because Jesus has so much respect for us. Right. That he gave them the choice. He just said, do you also want to leave? And what happened then is that they looked at him and Peter is the one who speaks up on behalf of the group. Peter often does that, right? This is part of why Jesus made him his, well, we don't really know why Jesus made him the first Pope, right? But we know that, I think it's fair to say that those two facts go together. Jesus was Jesus made Peter the first pope, and we see Peter often stepping out as a leader, right, um, and, and speaking on behalf of the group. And you know what he says? Does he say, oh, I understand perfectly. I understand. You see, later you're going to give us this thing called the Eucharist, the Mass, Holy Communion, right? And it's going to really be your flesh and blood, right? Your body, blood, soul, and divinity. I understand that perfectly. Is that what he said? No. You know what he said? He said, when Jesus asked him, do you also want to leave? He said, Lord, to whom else shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. So in other words, Peter was saying, I, I don't really understand this either. I recognize there's a lot I still have to learn. And, and Jesus, you're going to have to teach me and help me to grow. But I trust you. Because you alone have the words of everlasting life. Jesus is the only one who has the words of truth and hope and salvation that have the words of everlasting life. So Jesus was preparing us for this gift. Let's see if you can see. Oh, that's good. That's a good angle. You can see that, I think, right? The gift of the Eucharist. You see the grapes, the grapes, which will become wine, the wheat, which becomes bread, and the bread and the wine becomes what? Jesus. Right? You see the host and the chalice in the Holy Eucharist. So this was Jesus's plan that the risen Christ would be with us in every age and in every generation. That when we go to Mass, that we really see Jesus. He's really there. So when we remember the story of the resurrection, here we are back at the resurrection window. When we remember that story, we remember it's not just a fascinating thing that happened 2,000 years ago, but it's true today. The risen Jesus is here today, alive in the church. That even when we receive Holy Communion, that Jesus is coming to live in us. In us. The risen Jesus is alive in us. When you were baptized, the risen Jesus came to live in you, right? So Jesus is risen. He is alive. But that can be hard for us to understand. So we have to be like Peter and trust and say, there's a lot I still have to learn. Jesus, there's a lot you still have to teach me, but I trust you, right? And you know who else is a great model of that? Is St. Joseph, right? St. Joseph had a lot of things happen in life that he did not understand what was going on, right? He didn't know what was gonna happen Right? But he trusted that God was at work. His life did not pan out the way that he probably would have guessed. He never would have guessed that he would have been the husband of the Blessed Virgin Mary and that he would have raised God's own son like his own son. Do you think he understood perfectly what was going on and what was going to happen? No, he didn't. But he trusted and he was faithful and he continued to devote himself to the Holy Family, to the Blessed Virgin Mary, to Jesus. He continued to work hard to provide for them. 
and to serve them. And he continued to devote himself to prayer. And so St. Joseph teaches us this kind of the same thing that, that St. Peter was modeling for us, right? That sometimes we don't know what's going on. Sometimes we might be confused and wondering, what, where is all this going? But we can trust Jesus and we can remain faithful. We can keep following him. We can keep praying. We can keep working hard, right? I bet you in these, in these strange days where you can't come to school and come to church, but you're still having to work hard with the e-learning and work hard with all kinds of things, and maybe, and maybe it's hard for you to understand, why do we have to do all this? But we can still trust Jesus, and we can still remain faithful. We can still keep working hard and still keep making time every day for prayer to be with Jesus, to talk with him, to listen to him, to say the prayers that we've learned, as well as just to, to speak to him from our heart and let him speak to our hearts. Because that's how prayer works, right? We learn those specific prayers because they help us to open our hearts to Jesus. They're not things that we learned in place of talking to him from our hearts. They help us to get in that habit of talking to Jesus and to know how. Because sometimes we're going to go through maybe particularly hard times or we don't even know. We can't even come up with the words to say on our own. Well, thankfully, Jesus, for example, taught us the Our Father. The church has taught us the Hail Mary, the Glory Be. All of these prayers that help us to turn our hearts to Jesus, because no matter what's going on, no matter how confusing it is, how hard to understand, we can trust Jesus. We can be faithful, hardworking, and committed to prayer. So we're going to ask St. Joseph to pray for us today as we continue our Mass. this plugged in so we don't run out of battery okay so brothers and sisters let us place all of our prayers in the hands of our loving fathers we pray for the whole church for francis our pope Aiden, our bishop for all the clergy and all the faithful we pray to the lord lord hear our prayer we pray for our world for an increase in peace justice and respect for all human life we pray to the lord Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone in our community, uh, both our parish community, St. Louis Parish, uh, and our school community, a group Catholic school, that everyone who is struggling and hurting in any way, that they may trust in Jesus and follow him and work hard and continue to pray to him every day after the example of St. Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the peaceful repose of all of those near and dear to our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the freedom and purification of the church, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls with loving confidence heavenly father we entrust all of our prayers to you trusting in your holy will for you are good and your love endures forever we ask all of these things through christ our lord Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the divine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten Son who is conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you, heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim. Worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new call, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. For you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold, he who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Alleluia.
an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already there, I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Um. <clears throat> Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O oh Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. And as we uh, process out, um, uh, let's sing together uh, a, a song that I think would make St. Joseph happy to sing to the woman he loves, okay? And the woman we love, our mother, uh, whose uh, month of Mary we begin today. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, ave, ave Maria. Ave, ave Maria.